starting a business during a recession. Reasons why, things you need, and the best businesses to start are. What's up guys, Chris Craze here, and today's video, starting a business during a recession. You ask why? Well, a recession may be around the corner, you just don't know. So why not plan for it? Now, jumping right into this, but before we do, subscribe, notification bells, and the like, and the ding, 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 because you know that's what we normally do here. And let's get into this. So number one, reasons why. Why would you want to start a business during a recession? Well, it's simple. I got eight of them. Number one, people want innovation. Who doesn't want innovation? Things change. Some of the best businesses started during the last recession. Uber was one of them. Look what it's done for the economy. There's been many others that have started as well. The list goes on and on. I'll put the list up here in a number of seconds in five, four, three, two, one, Bing. So there's, you see what started in 2008 recession. Pretty cool, huh? Now, number two, you want to save money. So why would you want to start a business? Because you're saving money and people want to save money. Right now is the best time people are cutting back. So what's number three? Volatile, basically business arena is what you would say. Now, if you're in the stocks, then you would know what volatile means. But if you're not, then what it means is it's a very unstable economy. It's an unstable market. Things are unstable. So new businesses have a chance to emerge and actually do well. What's number four? Leads to less competitors. Yes, competitors may close because it's an unstable market. Those competitors that can't survive and they can't make it through this, they're gonna close, they're gonna shut down, which leads to less competitors. Less, less is more because you're getting the more, they're getting the less. Less competitors, you have a better chance of competing and actually coming up is what they call it. Now, what's number five? People are looking for work. Yes, of course, everybody's looking for work right now. Who isn't? Now, here's a plug, shameless plug. Other videos on my channel, we got a one and with two and three. We'll pop those on the screen here. As you can see, I've done other videos on exactly what jobs are available and how to work from home. You could check those out. But people are looking for work. So why not make a business where people are looking for work and you can hire people. See that? It makes sense, doesn't it? Now, no, what's number five? Prices are gonna be low. Prices on everything are low. People are cutting their prices back. This is why some of the competitors may go out of business because they're cutting their prices back and they're not gonna be able to sustain. They have a skeleton crew, prices are cut back, they simply cannot make it. What that does there is allow you to come in and get better prices on some of your merchandise, get better prices on some of the things that you need to buy and negotiate better prices with vendors, which is what number eight is, is negotiating power. Startups are gonna be favored because they have the negotiating power. But let's reverse it because I got a little bit out of order there, right? Number seven, smart investors want to invest. Right now is the time you're gonna be able to get investors that are smart, that have faith in businesses and know what they're doing to invest in your business. And of course, like I said, number eight is going to be startups are favored, negotiating power. So there's a list of eight reasons why. Now, the things that you need if you're gonna be starting a business, that's the most important here almost because who cares about the reasons why? They are important, but not as important as things that you will need. Number one, survey. I have this broken down, survey. Look for the pain. If you could solve a problem, it's so much easier to solve a problem and provide a solution to the people. Find the problem, solve it with your solution, put yourself in a position where you're the only one to get that solution to the people or make them think that way, and then boom, it's a win-win for everybody. They're getting their problem solved, you're getting a customer. Who doesn't want a new customer, right? Now, what's number two on this? Number two is create. You're gonna be creating businesses to solve a problem. Could have swore I just said that but I'm saying it again because it's that important. Now, what's number three? Build a team. Your team is gonna be the most important thing. And I have another video here, pop this on the screen where I just talked about systematizing and making sure that your business is running, systems are going well. Because it comes from a thought to an action, to a process, to a system, to a successful business. Taps B is what I call it. Now, that's on another video here that hasn't been made yet, but there's a plug for a future one. So building a team is very important. You've gotta have the right team, which goes into here. Do what you do best, outsource the rest. That's a famous uh, quote that I've heard from a couple of people, but I'm saying it again here because it's very important. Don't be the jack of all trades and try to wear all your hats, you're gonna fail. 
outsource what you need to. I have plenty of videos here that will help you with that. If not, there's plenty of resources online. So what's number four? Grit. So we have survey, create, build, and then grit. Grit is pushing through and doing no, doing what it takes, no matter what the circumstances are. Don't look at the glass half empty, look at it half full. Right now is your opportunity. Right now is the time. Go for it and take advantage of it. Which leads us to number five, which is focus. Focus immensely on what the goal is and focus on getting your customers, keyword customers, and more of them, what they want. If you focus on the customers, you're gonna follow in Amazon's footsteps. Now, I'm not saying you might be as rich as them. <laughs> Jeff Bezos, where you at? But the key point here is the customers, which leads us back into something on number seven, but we gotta keep this one in order because it has to stay in order. Number six is ignore. Ignore the fancy widgets and the BS. There's so many services and so many platforms and so much crap out there that tells you, you gotta have this and you gotta have this, you gotta have this. It's called shiny object syndrome and yes, we all fall for it. Don't fall for it. Do the basics, solve the customer's needs and solve the problem without any fancy widgets and then add the widgets later to make things more efficient. But you gotta test first. Okay, which leads us into number seven, five and six lead to number seven, fluid, remain fluid. Change according to customer feedback. If you have your mind set in stone and you're not listening to your customers, you're wrong. So many times on The Profit, I've seen businesses where they're stuck in their own way, they don't wanna change, they don't wanna take customer feedback or vendor feedback or anything, and they fail. You have to be open-minded. And going back to that, when you get the system in place because of all these changes and you start refining it periodically down the road, that might be months, that might be years, it might be days or weeks, it depends on how fast you grow. When you refine it, you start to systematize it and you refine the processes, systematize it, and of course, then you start adding those fancy widgets that help make your business run more efficiently. Now, going into the third part of this, which is the best businesses to start. Why would you wanna know the best businesses to start? Because these, in looking at the past, these are the businesses that did best in last recessions and when the market started getting crazy and volatile, as they call it. I hate that word, but I kinda of love it. Yeah, hate and love, you know? Anyways, best businesses to start, what are they? You wanna do evergreen businesses. That's not a number one, I'm just saying evergreen because evergreen is not going away. Evergreen businesses are gonna be informational products, they're gonna be like automotive services, they're gonna be like weddings. Weddings, number one right there, weddings, okay? Wedding DJs, I've done a lot of weddings. I DJed like 800 weddings in my career and I know weddings are never going away. People want to get married. They still want to get married and they still have weddings booked. When there's a recession and there's a situation like there is right now, they're just getting delayed. They still need DJs, they still need planners, they still need catering, they still need all of it. So those DJs out there, where you at? This is for you. DJ so-and-so, straight up live in the mix. Plug, wedding planners, caterers, caterers in the food industry, food, another one, that's not going anywhere. Now, of course, yes, number two, I just said it was food, if you weren't paying attention, and that goes into bulk sales of food. I mean, a food truck. Food trucks are the new easiest business. You pop one of those up and just roll it down to the corner. Set up a situation and a contract with a liquor store and you could prop it right in their parking lot. Now, of course, local laws apply. That's on you to figure those out. I'm not gonna do that here, but just a suggestion. And of course, these are actual brick and mortar businesses. Another one could be an automotive service. People need cars. What are you doing? You're helping somebody when they have a need. If somebody's car breaks, they need to fix it. If that car doesn't work, trust me, public transportation sucks and your whole life just turns upside down. So. When you have a car and it breaks, you need it fixed. That's how you have to think about this. There's many other examples. There's, these are just three of them right now. Now, going into something that's more online because a lot of this channel is about virtual work, which leads us into number four, virtual assistants. I have another video on that. I could pop that up there and we could see that because virtual assistants is important. People need virtual work. And there's so many other things that go into that. I have the other videos that relate to that. But moving on here, number five, which I've talked about before, is writing. What's gonna be happening when people are going back to work? Resumes. People are gonna be submitting those resumes. And guess what? A lot of people don't know how to write resumes. Cover letters, resumes, you know, statements, things like that. Who, who they should put down for their references. Don't put your boss down as your reference because then you can ask them whatever you want. Pro tip. 
okay? I'm not a resume writer, but I do know how to write a resume because I do hire people, okay? I have my many businesses and I've hired a lot of people. So I do know what to look for. Coming from a business owner, please respect that. Now, what else? Stand out, don't give up. Keep that phone ringing. People are gonna want resumes. So writing resumes is a key position. People need resumes. You see the thought process here? Cars need fixing, need automotive services. So moving forward, what else is gonna happen? This is kind of the elephant in the room. Elephant, whoa, yeah, elephant. Debt collection agency. Unfortunately, people are gonna be backed up on bills and people are gonna to wanna to collect. Cha ching So. Debt collection agency, if you wanna start one of those or you wanna to try to work at one of those, a lot of those are remote, it's all phone work, computer work, don't have to go in somewhere. Those are gonna be booming in the next X amount of months if and when and when there is a recession. So that's another one. Now what's number seven? Seven is accounting services. Yes, accounting. Why? Because new businesses are gonna be coming out. Businesses are gonna be opening again. They might not be able to afford some of their accountants in the past, so right now is the perfect time to start an accounting business. If you know anything about accounting, get into it. Bookkeeping, get into it. It's all remote, it's all online. Yes, now, Amazon FBA is another one. I talk about that on this channel. That's number eight. Amazon FBA, drop shipping, selling stuff online, building yourself a website, okay? Wait, maybe I spoke too soon. <laughs> Anyways, you'll see why in a minute. Number nine, other work on my channel that I mentioned. There's so much of it. I've named a couple videos on here already, but you could check those out and let me know what you think on that because I'm here to help you guys out. I do the research and I just skim it down and bring it to you so you can just point, click, watch, and take action. Take action. This is the year to take action. Look at this as the glass half full. That's how I'm doing it, okay? Now, what's the bonus? The bonus here is this. Wait, hold on. Bonus music, ready, go. Sweet, bonus music now. Anyways, you like that? So, starting your own website is not as hard as you think. I have a video on that, which I'll put the link in the description and you can check that out. And if you still want more work on that, leave a comment below, let me know what your thought process is, and then I'll message you and then we could set something up because I'm here to help you. Yes, websites are not that hard and when you have a website, you can do anything from it. Affiliate marketing, put website links on it, uh, sell products on it, the whole nine yards. And my next couple of videos coming out, you'll really like those, I promise, because it's all about making money online and what products to put on there. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'm Chris Craze. Hit that subscribe button, likes and notification bells. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Until next time, thanks for watching the video and please share if you know somebody that would really enjoy this because I do this for you. So sharing is caring. Happy face, ready? Wait, this side, ching. Yes, anyways, I'm Chris Craze and I'm out.